My name is Sam Wagner. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The securities industry worldwide is constructed upon the quicksand of self-delusion and socially acceptable confabulations. These serve to hold together players and agents, investors, brokers and fund managers, whose interests are both disparate and diametrically opposed. In the long run, the securities markets are zero-sum gains. The only possible outcome is win-lose. They win, you lose. The first dirty secret is that a firm's market capitalization often stands in inverse proportion to its true value and valuation as measured by an objective neutral disinterested party. This is true especially when agents, management, are not also principals, owners. That is, when managers and owners are two separate groups. Owing to the typical management compensation structure, which is invariably tied to the firm's market capitalization, managers strive to maximize the former of their compensation by manipulating the latter, the market capitalization of the company they manage. Very often, the only way to affect the firm's market capitalization in the short term is to sacrifice the firm's interest and therefore its value in the medium to long term. For instance, by doling out bonuses even as the firm is dying, by speculating on leverage, and by cooking the books, needless to say. The second open secret is that all modern financial markets are Ponzi or pyramid schemes. The only viable exit strategy for investors is by dumping their current stock and bond holdings on future buyers. Fresh cash flows are crucial to sustaining ever-increasing prices. Once these fresh cash flows dry up, markets collapse in a heap. Thus, the market prices of shares, and to a lesser extent, debt instruments, bonds, corporate bonds, are determined by three types of cash flows. The first is the firm's future cash flow, incorporated into valuation models such as the CAPM or FAR. The second type of cash flow is future cash flow in the securities markets, in other words, the ebb and flow of new buyers. And then there is the present cash flows of current market participants, current investors. So the confluence of these three cash streams translates into what we call volatility and reflects the risks inherent in the security itself, the firm's idiosyncratic risk, as well as the hazards of the market, known as alpha and beta coefficients. To summarize, stocks and share certificates do not represent ownership of the issuing enterprise at all. This is a myth, convenient piece of fiction, intended to pacify losers and lure new blood into the arena. Shareholders' claims on the firm's assets, in case of solvency, bankruptcy, or liquidation, are of inferior or subordinate nature. Shareholders rarely extract any money out of the wreckage once a company goes belly up. Stocks and bonds are merely options. They are gambles on the three aforementioned cash flows. Their prices wax and wane in accordance with expectations regarding the future net present values of these three cash streams. To remind you, the firm's own cash flows, future cash flows in the security markets, new buyers, and existing investors. Once the music stops, shares, bonds, any kind of instrument, they're all worth little, if not worth less. And like in any self-respecting casino, the operators of the outfit, your stockbrokers and fund managers, collect all the remaining chips and patiently await the inevitable arrival of the next wave of suckers like you.